All right, Isaac Harris, let's talk about Dennis Schroeder because he is a free agent point guard. And according to Tim McMahon, free agent point guard Dennis Schroeder had 18 points and 19 assists to lead Germany to a Eurobasket win over Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hmm, interesting. Among the courtside spectators, Mavs GM Nico Harrison and Vice President Michael Finley, who are in town to support Luka and Slovenia, as well as Dirk in his retirement, his jersey retirement for Germany. So, why Tim? Okay, let's do the. Can we do the windy fingers? We're doing the Brian Windhorse fingers, fingers together and then now apart. Now, why would Tim McMahon tweet this? Okay, I love the synergy of us doing this to Tim McMahon, who is on the podcast on that other podcast with Windy. Uh, now, why would Tim tweet this? Well, the Mavericks have a need. How much have we talked about their need for another guy that can create his own shot and create a shot for for others? Now, Germ- and that's why they're there to watch Musa and. You know, Musa was playing against Germany that game. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, God. I was like, where is this going? Uh, and and he had 18 points and nine assists in a, a win against against Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he's averaging 18 points and 7.3 assists in the first Germany's first three games in Eurobasket. And they're 3-0. and And so he's playing pretty well. We know what he can do in the NBA. We've seen him not too long ago like help lead a team to the playoffs, that OKC team with Chris Paul and Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And you've seen what he can do. It's just been so weird to see his career and where it's gone since oh. that Lakers season where he turned oh, yeah. down he turned down that extension, turned down that to you know to re-sign at them, ended up being like a minimum guy and now he's just kind of like out there and hasn't re-signed at all. It's wild because, you know, he's about to turn 29 here in a couple of weeks and 29? you know you go, you go back to those OKC, you know, years right before the uh, that Lakers Lakers year, you know, he had 19 he averaged 19 points a game coming off the, Coming off the bench at 1920 season, uh, he goes to the Lakers. He plays those 61 games for the Lakers. He averages 15 points. And then there's the whole, like, you know, some people are like, is this the worst advice someone's ever gotten from an agent? It was like him or and from, Nerlens from, Noel from that we, we were talking about. Yeah. Like the worst decision to turn down an extension of all time. Because the Lakers offered him a massive extension number. And I, I mean, I don't have it. Was like ni- it was I like want- 95 million or something like that. Yeah, I was going to say it was like 80 or 90 million. He turns it down because he's like, I want to go to free agency and make more money. And it just dried up. And he didn't He didn't get any bit of that. You know, he signs with Boston. He plays these, you know, 49 games for Boston. Ends up, you know, on Houston playing like 15 games for Houston. And, you know, people thought that Houston is just going to like buy him out. They didn't. They just kept him. And now he's just like in this like no man's land of, all right, well, he doesn't have a team. What What's his future in the NBA? He can obviously still play. He's playing well for Germany. It was just, I mean, that Lakers year that they offered him extension was the 2020-2021 season. So it wasn't, that was just like a short time ago. And he's not old. No. So you, you have to ask the question. It's like, well, why isn't another team? Because that's where I look at it. I'm like, yeah, if the Mavs wouldn't sign him today for a minimum contract, sure, he would fit. Like what you want, he would fit exactly of like what you would want Dragic to be of like come off the bench, you know, what a lot of us thought that they would sign Dragic to to do and be. Score it's and like, pass. <laughs> yeah, be able to run some of the offense whenever, you know, Luca's not on the floor, or Dinwiddie's not on the floor, or whatever it is. I just have to I just asked the question, why isn't any other team picked him up? You know, for That's a minimum contract, like why is it any other good team? Like, there's so many teams out there that would take another guard, another good guard. Why isn't another like really good team picked him up already? You all, I always wonder this, and I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of time. There's there's one free agent every year. That people are like, why aren't people signing this guy, Isaiah Thomas? Why is this guy not signed, Dwight Howard? Before, why is this guy not signed? Okay, if every team in the league hasn't signed this guy, there's a reason. Right, like, then, like there's a reason at a certain point that if every team is not, he's not. There's, there's very rarely just these like uncut gems out there that, that people aren't like signing because there's some you know weird reason. For Dennis Schroeder, it, I think it's it's been the attitude we saw it in Houston this past year where he just didn't fit with those guys. He want he wants to get back to that that number, right? He is like he's. The Lord of the Rings show just came out this this past weekend. He is yes, Go- it he, did, baby. He is Gollum looking for the ring, right? And he goes from Schmeagol to Gollum, like back and forth, where he's like, "All right, I'm taking over. This is me." And he like was outcast from that Boston team last year. Outcast. Like he was just like he took over and and messed up so many times that they were like, "We just rather not have him." Like, can we just get rid? Of, can we just drop him? 
like fans. I listen to Locked On Celtics a lot, and John Corrales was like, he's one of the big problems. It was like him and Josh Richardson that were like the big problems on that team. Uh, and we're like, we just got to get rid of these guys and figure out a way to to get them out of here. And they did, and they ended up getting rid of them. And then Boston went on a really big run. <laughs> like You kind of wonder. And so now you're like, okay, why would the Mavericks not? It's such a glaring need. He fills that. Like, why would we not sign a guy like this? And um, it's because of the attitude thing, right? Like, that's what, that's what seems to have been the red flag for some of these teams. It didn't work out in Boston. And if it doesn't work out in Boston, that's a red flag. That you know that shows because they needed a guy like that too. They're looking for another playmaker. They went out and traded for Malcolm Brogdon this past year, and it didn't work for them. And so for the Mavericks, I think it also is compounded by they're taking this this chance with Christian Wood, trying to figure out how that's going to fit. That's not been the greatest fit for him in the past with with some teams and coaches and things like that. So they're taking a little bit of risk there. I think the Ma- Mavericks will be great with that. They'll figure it out. I think Jason Kidd will coach him well. I think it'll just I think it'll work out really well. I've been really high on what Christian Wood can bring. Now, if you do that with two players that expect things in contract years, trying to figure stuff out, along with bringing back Tim Hardaway Jr., who is kind of a wild card for the Mavericks a little bit. We've seen what he's done in the past, but last year before the injury, he was not the best either. He's going to want to come back and have shots, along with the fact that Spencer Dinwiddie is not a sure thing either. As much as you listen to Slightly Biased and he thinks that he's like the biggest sure thing in the world, and like I can agree with him that he'll be good. We don't know that he's a for sure, for sure thing. And so all of a sudden, you bring in Dennis Schroeder, and then you have, all right, our entire like scoring players besides Luka are just not sure things and are complete wild cards, and we're just really not sure what we're going to get from any of these guys on any given night. And it could just all go bad really badly, especially for a team that has, that prided itself on chemistry and accountability. Those are Jason Kidd's two big words last year. And I don't know if you can do that on, on this many occasions at once. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if they signed him, then they're obviously signing up for um, they're okay with the chemistry stuff Yeah, because I, I don't think it's a um, the only talent part of it is kind of like the scoring part of, hey, you already have a lot of scoring coming off the bench and like a Tim Hardaway, Christian Wood. Like, would you prefer a point guard who is kind of like, hey, let's just like set things up. Let's just keep the offense flowing. That's why the you know the Dragic thing made so much sense. If they just went out and, and did a minimum thing with with Schroeder, I think that that then you would have the fan base that would be like, well, why didn't we do that with Dragic more? You yeah. know, like if they went out and and they make a trade for a Clarkson, they make a trade for a Mike Conley or whoever it is, then it's like, all right, you kind of understand it. They've been working on this for a while. Like you get all of it, and then you could try to do the whole like you know, them or Dragic type thing. But if they just flat out sign another point guard for the minimum contract, which they probably would have with Dragic, you know, yeah. that's when it will set up for Mavs fans, the straight up comparison. But it has to go with the, and let's be clear about his play in Eurobasket too. He's averaging 18 and seven, but he's also shooting 34% from, from, from the field, 16% from three. Like he's, he's not shooting the best either. It's not like he's just this otherworldly player where he's just lighting it up over there. He's doing well and he's putting up numbers and they're winning, but he's not, he's not shooting the best either. Um, And with, with the Dragic comparisons, it's going to come back, come down to roll too. Like he's not going to want to come. He's he, there are going to be games when he might not play like, 20 minutes or 15 minutes. I don't know if that's that's kind of the kind of role he wants. If he wants to get back to that mountaintop, if he's, you know, Gollum trying to chase the ring of that contract, that huge contract that he was supposed to get. And so uh, he would have to agree to that role too. And if he doesn't agree to that role and the Mavericks bring him in anyway, that's when you, that's when you can become a malcontent. We're like, oh, they, they were supposed to give me this role and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed how much he would get. Now I think there is a role for him. But I don't know if it's an, as much as he would want. And so I don't know if that that makes a fit. Now, will he get desperate enough that he'll accept that and then Maverick can roll with it and then, you know, he'll he'll fall in line and Jason Kidd will be able to, will be the point guard whisperer and, like, work magic with him? That'd be awesome. I'd be so down for that. But it's a risk, and that's why I think the Mavericks aren't taking it. 